It, uh, it's indeed my pleasure to be able to induct the uh, next inductee. And I know that we've all heard the song by Leroy Van Dyke, the auctioneer's song in the first stanza. says, who wouldn't listen to his ma when she told him that he should go to school? He'd slip away in the afternoon, take a little walk, and pretty soon you'd find him at the local fishing hole. Yeah, that's right. He didn't want to be an auctioneer. You see, his father was an auctioneer. Started the business 50 years ago. And he'd slip off to the fishing hole or the deer hunting stand and when he missed school he'd take the teachers a fish or some deer meat and say he's hunting deer I'm not sure it wasn't the two-legged kind but anyway he'd skip school and bribe them so he wouldn't get in trouble well his father as I said started a consignment auction company and he and his two siblings would have to sweep the building out and wipe down the furniture and clean the old nasty moldy ice boxes out and he was not thrilled at all with the auction profession. But when he graduated from high school, because his father insisted, he went to auction school, and he graduated. Once he graduated from auction school, he came home, but he decided because fishing and hunting was his love that he would find an occupation, a job in that industry. So he started selling fish and tackle, fishing boats called the Going Jesse. And he was a going Jesse. He started fishing in bass tournaments in order to sell more merchandise. As he fished in these bass in tournaments, one of them was held in Monroe, Louisiana. And about an 8 o'clock one morning, the phone rings, and it's his mother. He says, son, would you please come home and help your dad? He has a big antique auction this weekend, and he needs the help. The son replied, Mother, I've told you once, I've told you 50,000 times, I don't want to be an auctioneer. I am a professional bass fisherman. <laughs> there was a silence on the other end. And the mother said, Son, please, just this one time. Now, we all know if mother says, please, it's just one time, what we're going to do? We're going to pack our bags and we're going to get home as quick as we can. So the next day, packs his bag and he goes home to help his father sell the antique. And this one time ended up being a lifetime because he never went back. You see, that one time, the first five years with his dad was tough. Really tough, as all of you know that have worked for your father. And the family joke is that the father fired him three days a week and he quit the other two. <laughs> but as a small child and all the way up, he came to the National Auctioneers Conventions. And now, as the song goes on to say, he did his best and he didn't jest. And he came to a National Auctioneers Convention conference and show as a full-pledged auctioneer. The year was 1975. The convention was in Louisville, Kentucky. And in Louisville, it's horse racing, so all the auctioneers go to the racetrack to place their wagers. As he was standing in the grandstands, he saw the most beautiful, gorgeous blonde walk by. I guess he had a shocked look on his face because the little elderly lady, about 80 years old, sat behind him and said, Son, did you see that? He said, Are you crazy? I'm not blind. <laughs> Being in the wagering mood, she said, I'll bet you $10 you can't have a date with her before the end of the night. He said, I'll tell you, I'll do one better than that. Not only will I take the bet, but I'll have more than one date as long as she's not married. If she's married, the bet's off. They shook hands. He went to work, and he won that $10 because eight months later, the son of an auctioneer and the daughter of an auctioneer married and he says that $10 has cost him dearly for the last 35 years. <laughs> well, he continued to come to the Auctioneers Association, and he's been a life member. And during those years, the last 35, 40 years, he's fulfilled his obligation, fulfilling many leadership roles. He didn't ever run for the director the first time. He had to be appointed by the president. But he had so much fun serving us and helping us that... When his term expired, he ran for the board of directors and he was elected and went on to serve through all the chairs. During that time, he spoke at 42 different states and at two foreign countries. He spoke about making real estate auctions a first choice, not a last resort. It was at one of those associations meetings that I met him. And I remember in his seminar, he said, 
If I can ever be of service to you, or if I can ever help you, please give me a call. And I thought, does he really mean that? So I called him, and he did. But as I've got to know him over the years, it's just not other auctioneers or friends or family that have called him. It's anybody that has a need. You see, he's helped many, many organizations. The Baptist Christian School, orphanages in Kenya, the School for the Blind, the Hope Homeless Men's Shelters. He's given thousands of hours and hundreds of dollars to St. Jude's. He even led the NAA's greatest fundraising drive, investing in our future. I once heard him say, the more I give, the more I'm blessed. And he is truly a blessed man. For today, his small family-run organization is known as the top real estate company in his state. And he is known as one of the top real estate auctioneers in our great nation. You know, I think I made a terrible error when I talked about Leroy's song. I didn't read the first line. There was a boy in Arkansas who is glad he listened to his mall, Mr. Joe Wilson from Hot Springs, Arkansas. Come on, Daddy-O, I want to watch you stutter a little while. Brother Wilson, it gives me great pleasure to pin you with the most distinguished and honored possession in the National Auctioneers Association, your Hall of Fame pen. Thank you. I love you, Daddy. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Thanks. I gotta see who all's here. Everybody. Well, I know uh, my competitors in Arkansas are having a good week because the whole staff is here. <laughs> Have y'all been here all week? No. no wonder the phone hadn't been ringing. Um, well, I'm not gonna try and introduce everybody, uh, but this is my entire staff, my whole family, my dad. I wish my mother was here, but. I know that. Um, and, of course, the most important one to me is standing right here. Uh, in 1961, Dad went to an auction, a uh, local auction there in Hot Springs. And um, after the auction was over with, Dad walked up to the guy. They were friends and talking. And, and Dad said, how much money did you make tonight? And I think he said $91, wasn't it? $91, I think. It was about an hour and a half auction. Yeah. And Dad's sitting there thinking he was running a gas station at the time, I think making about 15 or 20 bucks a week. And, you know, he thought to himself, he made $91 and worked an hour and a half. You know, he said, how do you become an auctioneer? And then in 1964, he went to his first convention. And then in 1966, I went to my first convention. And then in 1975, I went to the most important convention I ever went to in Louisville, Kentucky, and I did win the $10 bet that night and met Susan. Hello, Olivia. Come on, lady. And um, is Judy and Charlie? Yes, they're here. Judy and Charlie, Schweitzer, Susan's mom and dad are here. They've been members here forever. Um, 
I'm truly speechless. I really am. I, uh, this is a great honor. Uh, it's the highest honor, in my opinion. Um, and I hope one day I can do a $29 million auction, <laughs> Craig. <laughs> I did a $2,900 auction the other day. Is that... <laughs> yeah, most of, most of you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> we do a lot of those. Uh, but it is, it is truly an, an unbelievable honor. My entire staff here, uh, my, both of my sisters, my brother-in-laws, my daughters, my Olivia and Charlie Ann, uh, my two granddaughters, and Owen, look at this cute little thing. He's, he's the fourth generation auctioneer. But again, all I can do is say, Thank you uh, so much to the, to the uh, Hall of Fame. It's an honor that I don't deserve. Uh, a lot of you sitting out there deserve it more than I do, but I will accept it, and I <laughs> really, really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you.